I'm not an expert in ageing, although I have a real interest in how people differ across the entire lifespan. So what I am an expert in is individual differences. And when I saw this come up, I thought it would be nice to talk about what are some of the individual differences that we might not think very much about for people that are older. Um, younger people tend to see older people as old, right? <laughs> they tend to see them as being different from them and therefore put them in a semi-homogeneous group. So older people are very similar. They all care more about security and tradition. They're not as much fun anymore. A whole <laughs> bunch of preconceptions that we have. And then if you're a service provider, for instance, there isn't a lot of time to really get to know every individual person that you work with, but when you do, you can see real differences in them and you know that service provision needs to be adapted to differences between individuals as well. So um, my, um, this is sort of just an overview. Um, I've got a large study going across the whole adult lifespan of about 7,000 Australians and we're going to follow people for three years and look at um, changes and trends across the adult lifespan in terms of values and traits and behaviour and lots of things that we might find individual differences in. But what I'm just going to focus on is a very small amount of what we've got, in part because the data came in at 5.30 last night. <laughs> Actually, I had preliminary data, but I re-ran some things. And I want to look at a couple of concepts that people do differ in um, across the whole adult lifespan, but especially the 65 to 75 year old age group that I've got data for. So I want to look at how age between 65 and 75, does it impact how satisfied people are with life? I know my preconception coming in was that people would be less satisfied with life as they got older. I don't know what yours is. Also, how people perceive their age. So how do you feel? How do you think? How do you act? How do you feel like you look in terms of age? And does that impact your satisfaction with life? And um, fundamental to what I do is looking at personal values. So personal values are um, life goals, desirable life goals, things like, you know, we should have freedom, we should have equality, we should have fun in life, people should conform to rules. Um, these are uh, motivational goals that exist in all people. So just some background in the study so you know, there's over 7,000 individuals in, involved in this and we have a lot of measures on them. But the over 65 year olds, 65 to 75 year olds we have in the sample is almost um, 1,300. So we can look at a large enough group to be able to see what individual differences we might have with them. They're almost 50-50 male and female, 75% are retired but not all of them. Of course, I may not be retired when I'm 65 either. And 64% um, of them are married or in de facto relations and the others are living either independently or not independently. And almost 40% have some sort of post high school education. So um, I just sort of wanted to give a quick feel for what we have here because we'll be doing a lot more work in this area. The very first module includes a lot of information on background characteristics like personal values, personality, where people perceive themselves to be in the rungs of society. It's sort of a sociometric measure. Um, how religious they are, how they, how they perceive their age. We also have things like satisfaction with life and flourishing or well-being in different aspects of life. Collective engagement, how engaged they are with their community, quality of life, self-esteem, and then a whole bunch of behaviours that are coming up later. Um, so I want to talk first of all about how we perceive ourselves. So this is just first a little insight on how younger people perceive themselves. But the message here is that um, younger people perceive themselves being more similar to their age. 
and older people have a much wider spread. So when we're in our tw uh, tw uh, around our 20s, we're about accurate. We maybe perceive ourselves to be a little older. Um, but then as you get down to the 35 to 44-year-olds, you'll see there's a bit more of a spread. And the yellow is where we should be perceive ourselves. And you can see we're starting to perceive ourselves as being maybe pretty accurately, but a bit younger than we are. And when you look at the oldest group, the 65 pluses, you can see that a lot of them perceive themselves as a lot younger than what they are, okay? So, but what I'm saying is we've got this really wide range. I mean, does it matter? Well, maybe it does matter in how we feel and how satisfied we are with life. It's interesting to see how we feel like we look being, you know, right in there about where we are, but how we feel, how we act and our interests are younger than what we are. And so I just wanted to show, these are just correlations, Don't, we're not going to worry too much about them. They're really quite small effects, but they're significant. And the reason why I want to put these up is you would hate something like this to be deterministic, like people who, are, who feel younger, have much more satisfaction with life, right? We don't want to see that in data. But what we see here is that our actual age has a smaller effect than how we feel about our age, right? And fortunately, how we feel like we look doesn't have quite as big an effect as how we feel and how we act in terms of our age. So this is reasonable. And the slightly bigger relations, I mean, these are not big relations, but people who feel and act younger feel like they're more engaged and interested in their daily activities. They feel like they have more purpose and meaning in life. And they also feel like they have more rewarding social relations. So together, this sort of says that if we just look at those 65 to 75 year olds, we still see a lot of individual difference in this. The fact that age has an effect on satisfaction with life, and notice it's positive. So the older you are, the more satisfied with life you are. Again, a small but positive effect. It was counter to what I thought it would be. And if I did the same age groups with all the other sample, there were no other effects. So age has a, has a very tiny effect on satisfaction with life, but it has the biggest effect in the 65 to 75 year olds, and it's positive. So I thought that was good news. Um, personal values. These are the things that are really important to us in life. This is across the whole sample. And what I just want to point out a couple of things is that there are age-related, almost linear trends in what people think is important. Pretty well, on average, people think putting themselves above others, like, um, I wish I could know how to point with this, but is that it? Oh, yeah. Putting ourselves, uh, sorry. Yeah, putting ourselves above others, which is achievement and power, is negative for everyone, most negative for older people. Um, security gets more important as we get older and is most important for older people. Benevolence, caring about our family and friends, gets more important as you're older. And things like stimulation and uh, self-direction, simulation and hedonism get less important as you're older. But, you know, then we, we see these correlations in what I do that say older people, you know, are higher on tradition and conformity and lower on stimulation and self-direction. But do people differ in these things? So I just took five exemplars on each thing and I thought we'd just have a quick look. So this is five people in the first top graph. For these five people, they care most about... Um, what we might expect, uh, um, conformity, benevolence and universalism and least about power and achievement. But at the other end, there were five people, and there's a lot more, but I just took the five extreme ones, who really don't care about tradition, right? And they really do care about hedonism, achievement, stimulation and self-direction, right? I took another... Oh, took another... another uh, pointed at the right bit. Okay. I took another five people and these people care the most about self-direction and the least about tradition, conformity and security, 
whereas these people care the most about security, tradition and conformity. What I just want to show you is people care about different things in life and these things are related to attitudes, to behaviours, to interests. I can't show you evidence yet, but I will <laughs> later. Um, and I just want to show you in terms of well-being, again, small but significant effects, those people who place others above themselves, we call them self-transcendent, so the more you place others above themselves, the more satisfied you are in life, the more you feel like you have purpose and meaning, the more your social relations are supportive, the more you actively contribute to the happiness of others, and all of this actually relates to satisfaction with life. On the other hand, if you put yourself above others and you want achievement and power, these things have a slight negative effect on your well-being. Um, there's no reason in particular why it should, except they tend to be more selfish interests. And they're probably harder to um, satisfy as you get older. So I um, want to just talk about a few effects of satisfaction with life. They're small, but they show that we have individual differences and maybe they can indicate some of the ways in which we can incrementally help people be more satisfied with their life. So satisfaction with life increases with age, small effect, but it also increases if you act younger than your age, if you feel younger than your age, if your interests are younger than your age, and if you look younger than your age. So maybe we should think about what we can do to reinforce this, because perceptions can be reinforced. So maybe helping older people to feel younger in what they do, um, how they act and what they're interested in is a way of increasing their satisfaction with life. Um, I also looked at personality, and I haven't got it in here, um, but values are part of personality. So uh, satisfaction with life increases when you prioritise others over yourself in terms of the gu guiding principles in life. So they decrease when you prioritise yourself over others. Perhaps we should be thinking what we can do to help those people who do want to achieve things in life, who do want to be better than others, to prioritise themselves over others, perhaps there's some way of making them more satisfied with life as well. Um, satisfaction with life also increases with things like extra, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness and openness, which you would expect, and decreases with negative emotionality, things like anxiety and worries. So maybe we should be thinking of how we can ease those in people who have um, negative emotionality. Um, also, there was quite a large effect in satisfaction with life with where people place themselves on the sociometric or socioeconomic ladder in life. This is again a perception of where I am in the rungs of my society. So what, what can we do to help people feel like they're an important part of society? And it's interesting that it was to a lesser extent how connected they were with their community. So think about maybe what we can do to increase their connection with the community, but also to feel like they are not at the bottom rung of society, rather than the top. And this research um, is part of a project, which is uh, the Values Project. And um, there's a website up if anyone's interested in doing their own values and having a look at what's important to you in life. There's a small survey that you can do on this website. It's valuesproject.com. The survey asks you to choose the most and least important um, um, value out of uh, 21 sets of values. And in the end, it gives you some feedback on your own values so you can see what is important and less important to you. And sometimes we are surprised by this, but we can usually relate to what it is. So if I just go back, um, that's the end of the presentation. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions about this. The main point that I wanted to make was that um, we all know in every aspect of life that people are really different. I mean, we fundamentally know that, but what can we do to help and reach those people that don't have profiles that take care of themselves?
Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll go round. We've only got two or three minutes, unfortunately. Okay. So we'll go round and we'll take all the comments and questions, okay. and then you'll have one minute to wrap it all up okay. and respond to them all. <laughs> all right. So we'll start with Veronica. Thank you. Yeah, I was just curious, was in, in the um, satisfaction with life increasing with age around acting younger, feeling younger, etc., was there, were there any questions related to their interaction with younger people or, you know, intergenerational? Just thinking about the retirement village living and... Yeah. For some people that don't have that that interaction with younger people, just the effect that has or could have. I think we'll just talk about questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm just wondering if the information or the research would be available by like local government anywhere. And any other questions before Julia responds? So we have postcode like, information on every respondent that's in here and they're all around Australia and um, this is actually part of a longitudinal panel and the panel um, that answers this survey are willing to answer more surveys and so what we intend to do is put the same survey back each of three years but between time look at focal issues so we might go in there and say who's living in a retirement village or intends to and ask questions specifically about those so this is an ongoing research project that we can put small surveys together to go back to specific groups of people and get more information. Wonderful. Thank you. If anyone has any other ideas, they have to discuss the in uh, the lunch break. Okay, very, very quickly. Have you looked at the difference between remote, rural and metropolitan communities? I, have. I haven't, but we have that information. 530 last night. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm sure we've got lots of other ideas of things that Judy can incorporate into future rounds of this research. So yeah, we love to hear your ideas. Thank you.